Hello, welcome to episode three, which is the second half of session two of uh, Mostly Off Topic Play. Here, there, and every door, the One Ring Second Edition. Um, uh, if you've been watching on stream, you know that this is more fake than um, Gert's wife being happy that Gudrun is in Brie. I don't know. Um, but there we have it. Okay, so I'm joining it away instantly. <laughs> I know it's awful, isn't it? I'm joined by uh, Gabe, and then we'll just go around in that order. Hey, I'm Gabe. Um, play Gert Kandry. Um, his least favorite meal <laughs> is beetroot stew. And then Sean also. <laughs> Hello, I'm Sean. Yeah, I'm. Um... Esteldor, the ranger. Least favourite drink is dead things in the stream. <laughs> um, which, uh, uh, also, Nick. Hi, uh, I'm Nick. I'm playing Barnack uh, the Dwarf, a stonemason, perhaps uh, a fake map drawer, and my least favourite food is also beetroots, too. There we have it. So, um... Also, Matt. Yes, hello. I'm Matt. I'm playing Arthaniel, the other ranger. Uh, my least uh, favorite food is uh, chocolate cake because I don't believe they exist. <laughs> I've seen one. <laughs> the cake is a lie. Um, and also Alessandra. Um, I'm Alessandro and I'm playing Gudrun, uh, maybe the, the most dangerous menace on that's hanging on the family of Gert. Uh, <laughs> uh, least favorite food. And my uh, best favorite uh, food is what I prepare with my hand. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there we have it. If Gudrun is not using her feet to make tea... Be aware. Um, <laughs> okay, so last time um, you made it back to Bree, you swore a solemn oath that you would keep your eye on the rangers. They definitely would not be skulking around in the darkness, scaring old women, cats and dwarves. In today's episode, the rangers will be mostly skulking around Bree, <laughs> scaring old women, cats and dwarves. <laughs> you, um, you had... Uh, essentially, we went back to Bree, had a number of different scenes where you, you kind of like, you know, interacted back with the normalcy of Brie. Perhaps not the most adventurous session that there's ever been, but good fun nevertheless. And kind of like just grounding us in the world that we, we kind of like, you know, partake uh, ourselves in. You have plans, though, to head across to the King's Chair, um, which you've you know, uh, established is in the wrong corner of the Midgewall Marshes, and to avoid any running laws with any in laws. Ridden laws. To avoid any riddings with any in laws, you're going to kind of go along the Great East Road and then swing up and around. However, before that happens, Gudrun has a date with the Prancing Pony, where she is to sing the song of, excuse me, troll slaying. Barak has a date with his counterfeiting kit. And the uh, the two rangers have a date with pretty much whomever else may be skulking around these streets of Bree at this time. So um, so we'll start, I think, with the Prancing Pony. So our scene shifts from the cosy kitchen table of Gert Gandry in a new town, substantial house, substantial property, part way up Bree Hill. And we move down into the centre of Brie. It's a lovely, if slightly cold night, the stars twinkling away. Odd clouds scudding through. Not much moon. But a brisk walk down the hill with uh, Gert and Gudrun finds them in the tap room of the Prancing Pony. Warm, the roaring hearth fire. Busy, 
packed, the hubbub of noise. Hey, Gert! Gert! Everybody kind of like uh, pats him on the back as they kind of go in. A number of potential suitors for Gudrun, male and female alike, kind of seem to preen themselves uh, a little bit. Yeah, maybe, maybe. There's some youngsters off in the corner drinking day beer, the equivalent of lemonade. Tomas is one of them. He's got what looks to be a mark on the side of his face, and his mates are trying to cheer him up a little bit. Lots of chat, lots of talk. The night moves on a little. Was that the sound of an old woman being disturbed in her bed by a pair of rangers? <laughs> Perhaps, but we'll <laughs> find out soon enough, I suspect. There's a lull in the conversation. Gudrun and Gert have perhaps got enough beer inside of themselves that they're feeling a little bit more brave. How does the evening play out, play out for you all? Gudrun and Gert. Gert's going to make sure that Gudrun is comfortable uh, before he starts to make any... <laughs> any moves to um, kind of drawing more attention to the two of them? Yeah, I, I think that he, he could not um, hide Gudrun and distract so much the attention because she uh, has dressed up uh, for, for the occasion and, and is, well, um, very well dressed and very elegant, and she wear all, only um, a sack, fine, um, uh, a fine sack. That uh, from that um, peer out uh, a little of gold. It is it is uh, the um, her, her harp, uh, harp that. We, she brought from from Dale, and uh, she um, she make a, a quite an entrance in in the room with his dress and after after Gert, and she stays uh, close to him, like to enlighten with her presence also also him and underline that he is the man, and she. She's following him, him. <laughs> and she waits him to well to to introduce her and to to start the evening. Yeah, so Gert's definitely feeling. Um, he he knows at some point he will pay for this, but he is he is very happy with his current situation. And, I'm, and uh, I'm sorry to interrupt, uh, <laughs> but are you thinking about the well? What are the odds of your wife just thinking about a glass of Merlot that she could come back to the fancy for me? Never happen. Never. <laughs> Paul would never do that. <laughs> it's gonna get passed back to her anyway because it's just, sure? everyone's in the in the bar. So yeah. <laughs> so um, <laughs> yeah, Gert kind of. Um, the people that he know, that you know, well, he knows everyone, but um, everyone that's kind of excitedly said hello, he'll he'll wave and and talk to, and then he'll have Gudrun with him and uh, make introductions. He'll kind of actually shy her away from the younger, better looking men of Bree that are here that are kind of like, you know, grooming themselves up a little bit. He knows, he sees them. Um. Yeah, I was like, I'm, I'm watching. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but he he also notices that uh, Thomas is is looks like he's maybe gotten a little smack on the face, and he he makes a mental note to definitely go speak with him. Um. Maybe after after the 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 singing has done, maybe. Um, 
trying to also extend the amount of time that the rangers have to accomplish their task. So I, I think Gudrun probably understands that this is more of a, you know, we need to give them a little bit of time. So we're having to go the through effort. the motions of, yeah, we're going through the motions of, you know, oh, yeah, this is, uh, you know, Bob Jenkins local you know local supplier of dung and dung accessories so you know this forks as they're also called <laughs> shovels yeah but um but after after a, a good amount of time you know he kind of checks with gudrun make sure she's ready Kind of, he's kind of cleared out a little bit of an area, you know, around a table so that um, she's got a nice presented, uh, you know, not a stage, but a, an area to herself. Yeah, okay. And Gudrun, um, stand up and bow um, slightly and then say, uh, good people, you know, um this common room and, the, and your prancing ponies uh news of this very lovely and cozy um in uh came also across the mountains to dale and i'm very proud to be here this evening uh to play a little song about the the adventure and the heroes the hero jest of your um, citizen citizens, uh, Mr. Gert and the little lad Thomas, that so proudly and courageously uh, go to recover the poor remains of his uncle into. A troll liar. And then I start singing. And in what is uh, Gudrun sings, um, the part of herself and of the rangers stay somehow in the background. She mentioned the help of the ranger to find the road to, but somehow is. Uh, is downplayed uh, not just because because the the reeve asked it but also because it's somehow she is drawn to underline the part of Gert in all this play in all this adventure <laughs> and and then so uh, I think I could I spend a point of hope and also invoke the trade fair to make the play more entertaining. Yeah, okay, seems fair. So, song um, is favorite, so I will roll two yeah. feet dice yeah. and choose the better. And I have two. I, I also use my harp that I draw from the sack as a very beautiful carved harp uh, made from the, the, the dwarfs of Erebor. And then I will roll so fi uh, five dice. Okay. There is a six, and I, um, I came over my target numbers then, then so is a great success. Okay. How would you like to spend the great success? Um, I think I could use it to um, to to have some unrelated news about it. So, because I think Gudrun is is uh, singing and 
he is in the center of the attention of the of the room, so he can look everybody somehow without without um, um, make his attention suspicious. So he can look everybody and know uh, if somebody is more. Um, um, attentive or interested on some part of the of the tale. For example, when she tell about the recovering of the body of uh, of the uncle, and she vaguely uh, says and sings about all his things. The poor things, the poor, uh, what she found, what they found on his body and 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 in the lair of the of the troll. Okay. Oh, sorry, if I can just <coughs> come in on. Um, do you have insight or in Harton? Insight and also in Harton. So one of the special successes just a consideration but you can widen the influence one of the things that you can do is you can spend that success which presumably would mean more people are taken aback but by your fantastic song oh, i think i think this is just already uh from the the great success but yeah so you're gonna get this is, so you're gonna spend the great success to gain insight are you you're gonna use that to to kind yeah. of establish if there are components of the um, of the um, audience that are more or less interested in parts of the uh, the story that you weave. Um, so Gudrun's song is beautiful and the way that she sings and the way that she plays the harp is astounding um, even if you paid no attention to the tale of heroism of Gert and Thomas and the supporting characters of um, <laughs> the Rangers and Gudrun and, and to a lesser extent Barak, you would still feel uplifted just by the melodies and the the meter that she employs. So, um, Barak, did you accompany them down to the um, to the inn, or are you kind of like working on your counterfeiting? I mean, I think I would stay behind the, if, if if Gert allows, I stay at his house and <laughs> close yeah, the okay. curtains and draw the map. So the first thing is that um, Gudrun, through the restorative act of performance, you recover a, uh, a point of hope. And Gert, through hearing such a pleasant rendition of your deeds and the ability just to reflect back upon what, what you did, even, even if it might have been played up or what have you, you kind of recover a point of hope as well. You can see that the song is is carrying through the audience more than perhaps some of your tall tales do. Perhaps it's because of um, the outsider retelling this. Um, but the audience kind of look at you with a with a measure a measure of respect that they didn't quite possess before. And the prancing pony, the hubbub, is settled as Gudrun entrances and enchants what can be a difficult audience. As the last note of her voice calms down and the strings of the harp acquiesce, there's a moment of silence and just a moment of pride for the brief folk that theirs achieved this goal. Broken by the crass clapping of the reeve. It's so great that I brought Gudrun all the way from Dale <laughs> to sing such a beautiful song this evening, sponsored by... <laughs> Cole Pinkart the Bereave. Uh, let's let's give this fine lady a round a, right, a round of applause. It's absolutely amazing. Absolutely. I tell you, I tell you, 
Uh, it was inspired. Um, yeah, I, 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 I sometimes, sometimes, the investment, the commitment that I have for Brie is it's just, it's it's brilliant. But that, I, I tell you, if you troll slayer, I give you the Brie man troll slayer. Exactly the kind of person that we need to send more out into the wilds, so that you know is not around. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, anyway, I'm on anyway. the road, <laughs> off the ballot. Nice, <laughs> fantastic, absolutely, absolutely fantastic. Let me get you some some night beer, Barnabas. <laughs> get me some Ranger Killer, <laughs> pint all around. <laughs> um, so. Garrett's Tom. absolutely dumbstruck uh, at this point, and he he doesn't usually find himself like that. Like he knew that, uh, you know, the song that she had sung, it made him feel better after a horrible, you know, battle, and you know there were wolves around, but he did not expect. You know, she has uh, she's uh, she's all done up. And she's said she's saying this amazing song about him, and he just doesn't really know what to do with himself. So people are coming up and glad handing him or whatever now that the night beer is out. But he's just kind of like, oh yeah, yeah yeah, that's me. <laughs> you um, Gudrun. So you see as you're singing. Let's just talk about Thomas for. Uh, a little bit he's um he's a little bit glum he's a little bit embarrassed at the start but towards the end tears are just streaming down his eyes there's there's something within him that has been released you don't quite know what it is at this moment but there's something being released and he kind of like gets gets up and he brushes off one of his friends and he kind of like you know, covers his eyes and he, he, he races off into the night Straight into a ranger spear, but anyway, that's that's, that's <laughs> and um, you see the reeve is a little bit uncomfortable throughout, and it's kind of trying to work out clearly throughout the whole of the yeah. song how he can maximize this, and that's how he behaves. But the largest Brelander that you've seen, big stout fellow really tall probably a bit older than you he was paying attention to what you were saying the the melody and the um the theatrical and poetic flourishes were lost on him but whatever you said about how the combat was undertaken and whatever you said about the strengths and weaknesses of the combatants he noted and you saw him note and kind of, he looked across at Gert a little Almost like reevaluating him, particularly those bits where you said as Gert ducked beneath the troll's massive cloak, turned, pirouetted, and struck him a mighty blow. He kind of looked as if he was having to reassess a possible foe, and that's what you learned from the um, from the spending of the great success with the insight established. So, I thought it was fantastic. Thank you very much. Uh, was good amazing. Job. Thank you, Alessandro. That was really good. Good job. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's let's hear it for Gert. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, okay, I'm just going to pause now and just kind of like get out of character a little bit. But I have to say, this is like, this is... Um, this is a second session oh, that we and played. In the end, I'm sorry. In the, oh, okay. in the end, uh, after the, the clapping and, and cheering and ask, uh, I, uh, and then, so you won't be so uh, sad if I borrow you this, uh, your hero for a little journey that I am going to, to take. So very sorry for that. But, well, you know, what better than this hero to escort me? Uh, across this country. That is an absolutely fantastic idea. I have to be saying, 
Good friend, are you sure you didn't have three parents? Because the ideas that you have are inspired. Absolutely. Let's let a big hand for the long and far journey that our hero, Gert, is going to make. Excellent. Uh, so, anyway, yeah, so I did a, for, for the second session of a, a group that hadn't met together before we played, this is, um, this is excellent stuff. I'm re really, really enjoying it. So, um, so whilst that's going on, um, uh, Esteldor and uh, Arthariel, you leave the, uh, the comfort of the kitchen table. You leave the, uh, the home cooked food. Taste explosion, by the way. And uh, <laughs> what was that? Salt? <laughs> <laughs> oh, into the the crisp spring night. No moon. It's one of those good nights. The starscape expansive above you. Okay. What's the plan, gentlemen? Yeah. Um, so, the suggestion from Gudrun was to go to where Thomas went, so we can start up there. Yeah, I, I presume before Gert left, we'd ask him where Thomas would live, I presume. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, you are you are capable, kind of like, um, uh, warriors, and whilst you as players may not necessarily have done that, you as characters certainly will have done. You won't have been like, oh, where are we supposed to go again? This is all of this is this is where we're meeting Gert <laughs> round two. <laughs> okay, yep. Yeah, so you know where Thomas lives. So you kind of got a view of um, of that, the Hooton um, homestead. Okay. Obviously, we're, I'm I'm guessing we're both gonna be hooded, uh, Matt. <laughs> yeah. Why not? Stealthy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what's the best way to pretend not to be burglars? <laughs> Cause I, I was well. I was thinking if this town's guard, we have to like try and avoid them as much as possible. Yeah. Okay. That, that pass my mind a bit, like stealth yeah. ways. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're innocent, so why not avoid the uh, the law? Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, sorry. I'm a bit provocative. Okay, so so so, are you heading across to the to the heat and homestead? Yeah. Okay. yeah. So, so Thomas lives in on the edge of Old Town, but almost where it starts to become East Row. And you will see that the quality of the the buildings and the building materials kind of like lessens a little bit as you get towards that area. And it's out towards the east side of Bree, where the Great East Road kind of like wends its way through. It's very obvious to your eye that this used to be fields. And in relatively recent for Brie, which might be 100, 200, 300 years ago. Um, and unlike the other houses, these, these are not uniform in their, in their build. And they've got lots of stolen stone. So the, the lintel of the house has got dwarven marks on it. There's a gargoyle kind of like halfway into one of the roofs as that part of stone has just been, been used there. And they are not particularly well maintained. So, so the pointing of the brickwork and the stonework is kind of eroded. The paint is peeling away. Some of the gardens are okay, but very many of them are run um, to, to kind of ruin. And, and Thomas's house is not part of East Row. It's, it's one of the stone and um, base timber upper um, uh, story houses. Um, but it's not especially large either, and it doesn't enclose a large amount of um, garden space um, towards the towards the back. It's on one of the the um, it's the the road that it sits upon is not even corduroy. It's just a, a kind of like dirt road that that's cold underfoot. You can see the flickering of two or three candles um, in one of the rooms, um, but not nothing other than that. Um, there. So there's two, two. There's like a, the door, couple of windows, stone first floor, timber, and it's almost like part of a terrace. Not quite. There's a gap between the houses, but there you go. Okay. You've not encountered very many Bree wardens on your. You've encountered no Bree wardens at all. In fact, on your kind of like journey down down the hill, and you can kind of hear the uh, the hubbub coming from the the prancing pony. 
most of the houses don't uh, are unlit. Odd ones have some lights in, um, but that's that's all. So in, so it's basically it's not busy. It is not busy now. Well, that's the door. I guess this is where we earn our keep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you, uh, if you don't mind uh, being a lookout, sort of around here, I'll, I'll venture. I'll just have a quick peek. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah. I'll like, lean up in the shadow somewhere. <laughs> yeah, okay. Keep okay. And I'll go into the deeper shadow. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. So could you just make me both uh, stealth rolls, um, yeah. please, as you're attempting to, to hide? Um, yeah, I passed mine and I got okay. a six. Okay, how would you want to spend that uh, tango? Uh, what was the options again? I've, I've forgotten. Uh, so, one of them is go quietly um, or make haste, gain some insight, that kind of thing. Um, if I did insight, that, would that make me more like, like aware of things? Yes, yes. Okay. So, 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 yeah, so you'll learn something um, from your actions. Especially if I'm a lookout as well, I'll probably go for insight. Yeah, okay. I've, so I've, 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 passed, I've passed my target number by one. Yeah, yeah, anyway, okay. So. Yeah, yeah, cool. And um, Arthaniel, what was yours? <laughs> <laughs> must be progress in my book this is a progress because I, I passed oh okay yeah, okay just, you know, okay so let's not get our hopes up it's just a pass no <laughs> not even anything on four and the beat die is seven and a seven so okay know, no, yeah. yeah I pass okay so the the, the norm for um, for one of Matt's characters that he tells is he's kind of like got pots on his feet <laughs> And as he clang, clang, clang down the, down the road. Okay, so you stealth. Okay, so you 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 get into the gap between the, the between the houses, and as far as you um, as far as you're aware, you think you're keeping a low profile. Yeah. Um. The, the, the first thing I want to see if there's any sort of interference or some sort of signs of unusual activity. I I would have you know I've grown up grown up in in the wild, but I would have seen villages. I know what activity is for normal people. And, you know, looking for Gror, I'm suspecting maybe he's been around here. I, I don't know. I'm just trying to look for something unusual. That's the first. first um, okay. So in the dark, it's quite hard to, to kind of like see um, in any case. But, but there's nothing that strikes you as being particularly unusual. There's no, like, dwarves with loaded crossbows around the back or anything along those lines. I will go to Thomas. Well, my my point is to go to Thomas' house. If I mean, mm -hmm. even if I mean, just let me know if there's somebody in. But the plan is. Yeah. So, the, so the, the front room of Thomas of the Heaton household is lit. So it's got a faint, um, a faint glow. You reckon one, two, possibly three candles in there. No light coming from other rooms. So we'll do a little bit of climbing, just to have a quick look at the. So you're saying that the first floor would be well, not unoccupied but doesn't seem to be any light. there's no light in there so if it's occupied it's occupied by people who are either asleep or well it could potentially be asleep or just i will see if i can scale the wall yeah yeah yeah, yeah easily the easily the um you know, it's, it's stonework it's timber work there's very many footholds and handholds of a man of your athleticism to to kind of like be able to kind of get up there you're reasonably quiet as you as you do so okay uh, is there anybody then in inside the that floor i guess or the room? kind of put yourself you listen you can't hear anything You both hear an argument. Nathaniel, you hear um, a raised voice. Um, Thomas's voice. Okay. I could be better. I could be better. You. <laughs> I've had enough. I've had enough. You sit yourself down. You idiot. You stupidity. You're nothing. And you'll not be anything. You're bringing shame on me. Your behaviour 
is ridiculous. Rangers. What do you mean they're all right, really? What kind of ridiculousness is that? Come on, out. Okay, I'm going then. You, you wouldn't know where to go. You can't do anything right. You're a fool. You get these dreams. The sooner you get into your thick skull, the fact that you're doing nothing, and you're nothing, and it's here, earning money for us, labouring. Maybe I'll get. Maybe I'll talk to the foreman at the quarry. I've had enough, Dad. I can't be doing this anymore. Well, where are you going to go then? I don't know. I don't know where I'm going to go. And the door slams. And Esther, you'll see Termas kind of come out, kind of wipes himself down. The door opens behind, smashes into him. A tall kind of guy, clearly kind of like um, Thomas's father, stands there and says, You are not worth it. You are doing nothing. Thomas goes up to him and says, that's not what my friends say. Gudrun believes in me. She can see me. Gudrun believes in you. Well, and then he just reaches and smacks him. Go to Gudrun then, looking like that. You're not a hero now, are you? I'm not as big as a troll. What are you going to do? And he just gathers his stuff and races off down. The father turns around, does not see you two. Nathaniel's like dangling just on the lint on the him. <laughs> I'm going down to the pony. I've had enough of this shit for one night. Kind of like grabs a, a jacket from inside, kind of like door slums behind, starts to stomp off. Okay. Um, when, the, when the father goes to him, Thomas has a couple of minutes to sort of walk off. I will try to go back, locate Estelle Bor. Okay. So so as as you're doing that, Estelle, do you see another shape just kind of like peel itself out of the darkness and start to follow Thomas a little? Okay. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll make uh, Nathaniel aware of that when he gets back to me. But there's somebody following him. Was oh, it a small, a small shadow? Uh, Ball. It is bigger than dwarf. It is taller than dwarf. Oh, bigger than dwarf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's maybe oh. one point six nine dwarfs. Oh, okay. you did get you did get a great insight. You did get a great success. So, <laughs> so it's not a dwarf that's following him. No, it's not a dwarf. Okay, okay. So very quickly, Esteldor, she's heading to the pony. Let's tail them, and then if we split up, we'll meet the pony. I, okay. you know, because we, I guess I want to then s split up so we have a better chances of at least you know tailing them and finding out who, who the other. Yeah, ones. I think I'm better than hunt. I'm better at hunting anyway. It's okay, so 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 what? Who's doing what? Sorry, I, I lost that slide. I'm, I'm politely trying to ditch Esteldor because I can <laughs> see a stealth skill. Um, right. Okay. So you're gonna. You're, and who are you following, Nathaniel? I'm I'm just focusing on the the second character. Right. So okay. And that's the door you are. Um. If I find you're going after the shadow person, I'll follow Thomas. Okay. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah. 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 yeah okay. Good. <laughs> okay. So um. So let's deal with Arthur first. Um. Okay. So you are um following behind the figure that's following Thomas. That's the door. Slightly awkwardly is following behind you, following the figure that's following Thomas. Um, but there we have it. Um, Thomas is just completely not interested in the world around him. He's kind of like crying. He hears his um, hears his dad kind of like stomping behind. You all hear that in truth, and he kind of like skirts down and starts to move up the hill before very quickly coming back around down and across one of the one of the open fields. You can see the um, see the sheep. Kind of like starting to get disturbed as he kind of like moves um, between them. The figure stops before it goes out into the open grass. Kind of like waits a little bit. Um, so what are you doing? So Nathaniel, you stop as well and hold there. I still do. What are you doing? Um, Thomas is quitting across the field. Sorry, sorry. Which way has Thomas gone? So Thomas is going across the field. He's going across an open field, so it'd be quite hard to um, to like stealthily follow him. 
Um, is it is it is it just a grass field? It's not yeah. like a lunk. No, it's not. It's it's not like it's it's um common grazing basically. There might be a ledge. There might be like um uh, a gradient you can kind of like duck behind. Yeah, I'll try and dive back, but follow him still. Yeah. 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 Okay. The figure peels I'll try, off. I'll try and stay, oh, sorry. I'll, I'll, try say, no. say, I'll, I'll try and stay low to the ground, like kneel, like bed yeah. down. Thomas isn't paying any great attention. Um, more attention is paid to you by the sheep. Um, as you kind of like come through me, <laughs> kind of stuff. Um, Thomas slips in through one of the um, one of the side entrances into the prancing pony, um, into the warmth there. A um, the, couple of minutes later, you hear the um, you hear the you hear the um, his dad stomp into the uh, into the main porchway. Oh, Daniel, this figure. As as Thomas was cutting across the um the field, this figure kind of like slips away, waiting a little bit, and you follow them as it kind of makes its way towards the um, the well, which is um, down by the old town, and it kind of just stops there. And then uh, uh, another figure, a dwarven figure, just comes out of the dwarf house. Make me a um, uh, sc- uh, no an awareness roll. Awareness roll, okay. Yeah. Um, let's do this one. Okay, that's six. Nine. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, it's a pass. There's no great success. Okay. It's just a pass in a 13. That is the description of the dwarf Grawl. Mm-hmm. And then you overhear the human figure say to Grawl, the kid's not got the map, but I'm pretty sure he knows where it is. What do you reckon? Get him. And we'll get it out of him. And I think that's where we'll call the session since we're coming up towards 7.30. Nice. And Barnack is left on a cliffhanger as he's (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. So, um... So that's it. So that's the end of the session, I guess. Um, there Fantastic. You go. Thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you, guys. Nice. Thank you. Um, so, yes, so um, thank you for those people who have been watching on Twitch. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Um, thank you to those people who will watch it on YouTube. Hope you enjoy it as well. Um, I thought that was fantastic. I think, um, for say, that's genuinely the, uh, the sex, sex, the second... <laughs> Um, it was a sex. That is just the only thing I can say about it. It was, it was, it was like sex after night beer. Um, there we have it. Um, so that was the second session. Uh, I might have to edit that bit out. Um, that we've played as a group. Um, just the the kind of sense of character and the kind of like readiness for stories and such like. Um, and we're starting to, I think we're starting to learn about each other's characters and play styles as well, and uh, and that's good. Normally, I don't like it when players go off on different things because it means that everybody else sits yeah. around, and it's kind of like you know, not so much a participant of the story, but but it was okay. I think I think it was okay. I think you guys were were interested in what was happening as well, actually, which makes a uh, makes yeah, much very much so. Yeah, yeah. Um, sure. I um. I want to say that um, that I think Gudrun's um, Gudrun's scene in the uh, in the in the bar was excellent. I thought that really kind of like brought quite a few threads together. Um, I really like that, and I think that Barnack's um, attention to his uh, hygiene and the uh, the moment with the towel <laughs> was unexpected. <laughs> I have to say, and um, and added a rich tapestry. Um, and it does not at all surprise me that the two rangers broke all the rules, and that's the reason why Bree doesn't like King Rangers. Can't trust them. <laughs> there we have it. Okay, um, right. So we play next. We play next. Win. It means or February. Yeah, that is right. Um, the eighteenth of February is the next session, um, and what I'll do is I'll put it into the. Um, into the scheduled dates, some some proposed dates for the next sessions as well, because we've got the 18th of February, mm-hmm. 
the 11th of March, and then we'll want an April and a May day, um, mm -hmm. just scheduling as well, but we'll, we'll do that on fly. Um, and um, and chats want to um, want to applaud the Reeve. Um, they think that he he really <laughs> is um, he really is the uh, yeah. man about town. You He's know, got his eye on what's important. You know, people say that Paul can only do old women. As as a as a lore master, but you know the sneaky sneaky Reeve is in his wheelhouse. As is a petulant petulant teen. Uh, there's a whole stable, and I think I think it's going to be less of a tour of Eriador and more of a tour of Paul's tapestry of, of characters I um thank you very much um I think um just you wait until I play my Margaret Thatcher character which is like an old woman Reeve um it will <laughs> it will blow your mind <laughs> thank you very much everybody um thank you for watching <laughs> right, that's, that's the end, end of the stream Thanks. brilliant right. stuff guys really brilliant stuff